Think about it in that way, and you realize how insane it is for people to bitch about these repair cost changes. I cannot believe it. And as I said, I know the silent majority is out there. I know the majority of people are very happy with these changes as I am. But that minority is getting louder and it needs to be debated, it needs to be discussed, and it needs to be put right. And that's what this video is for. I hope you understand that. And whenever I see any more of these economy changes, I will go to bat for Gaijin if the changes are as positive as these. Because these are insanely good for the average person. Me, 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 me. Okay, there we go. We've got the right note. So, um, yeah, this is a response video to tech. Now, I've got a lot of respect for tech, the European Canadian. He's made some amazing stuff and he makes some amazing content. And I don't feel like this is his best content he's ever made, nor his best arguments. Now I say this as a fan, also as a player and a content comment comment content creator. Uh, but I do feel like maybe this is due to burnout from the prior event. Why tech is getting so angry at this sort of negativity in the War Thunder community? Uh, towards these research point changes and re sorry not research point but the, the the repair cost changes at least now i completely understand his point of saying that yes this is a great thing there are some good things happening from this however i strongly disagree with the fact that he is calling people that are saying that this is not necessarily a good thing whiny bitching complainers. Now, when a silent minority starts to become the overwhelming majority, when the minority of ill and annoyed people become the majority, that is when it's flipped around. And this is kind of what's happening at the moment for Gaijin. Now, if we actually look at the repair cost changes, there are some vehicles that it makes no sense for. So, the reason that they, a lot of people, well, the reason that a lot of people are angry is because certain bombers have been extremely nerfed and hit hard. Um, so, the B-57s, for instance, have had additional repair costs added to them. So, this blue channel here is the difference. So this is where we're looking at. So the B57A is now 6,825 lines more expensive. The B variant is now 5,000 lines more expensive. So that brings you to 21,000 for the attacker and 16,000 for the bomber. Things like the B29 are still not changed. Now, what tech has been saying is, well, these are the bombers, you know, and th the reason it's changed is because bombers can make a big swing on the gameplay, and they can have a negative effect on, effect on gameplay, and it can really damage the way that games are played, and the actual enjoyment people can have. But what I would like to point out is the AD2, AD4, also the A26B, 10 and 50. These are all ground attackers. Now, these ground attackers have all had their re repair cost reduced. These four ground attackers, the A26B10, A26B50, the AD2, and AD4, all have the ability to end a game before it's even gotten started. A squadron of AD4s can finish a match within 
five minutes of it starting. Yet their repair costs have been reduced and are now sitting at 6,000 silver lions. Whereas you look at things like the B29, and I know Tech has said constantly, well, you shouldn't be looking at that, blah, blah, blah. But the B29 is 44,000 lions now. If we go down and look at some other vehicles, now I'm mainly going to be looking at aircraft here, but I will look at some other things as well. Um, there is a little bit of naval stuff as well that we could possibly talk about, but the main things are going to be bombers for me, because I enjoy bombers personally. To me, bombers are extremely fun to play and extremely enjoyable. So, we look at the... HE-177, which has gone up significantly, 10,400 lions, now at a 32,000 lion re uh, repair cost. In-game for me, it's around about, well actually, what is it actually in-game for me, because I know it's more than that, um, when I actually glance at it in my aviation tech tree. Uh, it, in I actually went and flew it today, my repair cost would be a maximum of 41,000 lions. In a plane that will average 50,000 lions on a good game, that simply doesn't add up. So what is Tech's advice to players who want to wish, who, who wish to play bombers, who wish to play these vehicles, who wish to play things like the TAR 152? Well, this advice to them is simply don't play it or die more in it, which is not very good advice. I feel like it's terrible advice, in fact. Now, there have been lots of changes in the positive. A lot of positive things have come from these changes. However, we can't sweep the negatives underneath the carpet and just expect them to be fine because they simply are not. Look at the Leopards. If we look at the Leopard 2A5, for example, 17,000 line repair cost now. This means that if you play this vehicle, you're going to be playing at a loss on most matches, which means you're not going to earn lions. Now, this isn't a problem when you've got 25 million silver lions stored up in your account. This is a problem when you're a free-to-play player or a player that does not play more than three times a week. This is a problem for the casual player base, the general player base, the average player base. Not the creme de la creme, not the worst of the worst, but your average players. Because your average players do not build up those lions. They don't have massive numbers of them. They don't have scores of money. And they don't have the ability to just keep grinding things like that. The advice of just simply stop playing a vehicle as well is complete and utter codswallop. Because the game is there to play vehicles. We are meant to be able to play and enjoy vehicles we want to play. However, vehicles that are extremely overpowered, for instance, um... I will just quickly glance through and pick some lower tier vehicles. Uh, so the KV-1B German variant has had a redu re reduced amount of repair cost by 60 lines. Not much, but it's a reduction. Yet this vehicle is one of the strongest vehicles in game. Let us look at the SF-40s. Again, very minor repair cost changes. Minus 130 for the Lechette and plus 20 for the Schwer. These vehicles are extremely overpowered and have a very, very good ratio of killing people, yet they're not affected as much. We look at something like the Karl Galster which again has had a small reduction, but this vehicle is almost obsolete now. Now there's been a reduction for cruisers, which is great news, because cruisers needed it. 
But the biggest issue that I have right now, the biggest issue I've had listening to Tech's video and listening to him waffle on about how this is a good thing and people should just shut up and just enjoy it is that statement. His hypocritical stance on the player base. Now, I mean this in the politest way possible. I'm not trying to attack Tech here, but I am trying to get the point across to him that when the majority start to complain about these issues, this is not a good thing. Gaijin has done a great thing by reducing research points, but it's something they should have done a long time ago. This is something that we have said for many, many years, many months, constantly talking about. Since rank 6 and 7 was introduced, we have said there's needed to be a reduction in the research points needed to be a reduction in the lion cost. Yet Gaijin has never listened to us before, really. They, they don't listen. But now they have. He's singing their praises. All ring the bells for Gaijin. Galore, galore. Gaijin has listened to us. Thank you, Gaijin. Thank you for making it so we can play some vehicles. But... The truth is... They've made this possible for some vehicles, but not all vehicles. Some vehicles that are extremely overpowered have still just been left alone. And some vehicles that have been, you know, a little bit stronger than others have been extremely hurt due to these economy changes. Let's look at the Gloucester Meteor Mark 8, for example. 14,000 lions for repair costs. Now this is a very good plane. But every other meteor is around the 7,000 lion part. It's extremely unbalanced and extremely unfair to have planes with such similar stats, yet one have such a high repair cost. It means that that plane is almost impossible to play. Now, Tech also brought up the Japanese planes, and things like the... I'm trying to remember exactly which one it was now. I'm, I'm The Otsu, the... Uh, I think it was the... Which one was it? I think it might have been the Ki-84s. You know, and some of those planes have become almost nigh impossible to use because they have such a high repair cost now. How is that fair? How is that acceptable? The reason Gaijin give is because, well, these vehicles have an extremely good kill to death ratio, which is absolute bollocks, because if that was the case, bombers would have a repair cost of zero lions. It's very rare that you get out of a match alive, other than if you're flying, say, a JU-288. The issue is, that I feel Tech has not really listened to the community. He's not used those ears to listen. I could do a Macho Man promo right now, or a... Hot Rod Rowdy Piper Matt promo on, uh, what was it? It was on the, uh, gosh, what was his name? I can't remember his name now. But it was a famous pro promo where he was half white and half black. A very racist promo, but he was just saying he's not using those big ears to listen to the problems. And this is kind of the thing. He's not listening to the issues, and yes, he was a free-to-play player two years ago. But the battlefield has changed since then. The way of the game has changed since then. The meta of the game has changed since then. And saying you did something two years ago holds no weight to the premise at all. Two years ago, I was flying my Lancaster for every single mission because I adored my Lancaster. And I was wondering why I did not make really many good lions. And that's because I was flying a Lancaster, which had a huge repair cost. And I was dying most matches, because starting in an airspawn 
doesn't really help you as a bomber. You're going to die. Scrolling through these repair cost lists, it is unbelievable how many vehicles have had incredible nerfs. Let's look at the STB-1 here. A reduction in its repair cost. The STB-1. One of the best 7.7 .7 tanks there is. A tank that will decimate most other 7.7s. Has had a reduction of 2,000 lions. Whereas vehicles that people enjoy, people enjoy flying. Let's look at Italy, for example, and look at some of the Italian planes. Are now almost at a stage where they're impossible to fly because they cost so much for repairs. The G56, for example, 25,000 silver lions to repair for a fighter. Now, it's only 151 more than it used to be, but it used to be 24,000 lions for a fighter. It's not really encouraging you to play a fighter as a fighter, is it? Because you're not going to want to get this plane scratched because you're going to lose money on every single game. That is not how you balance things, guys. You do not balance a vehicle by making it cost more. You balance a vehicle by putting it in the correct battle rating position. And you are not doing that. You are failing at your job and you are failing the player base. If a vehicle is overperforming, put it up a BR. If a vehicle is underperforming, put it down a BR. If vehicles are winning matches, such as the B29 spam back in the day, change how the match works. Make bases have high hit point costs, which you have done on some maps. There are some maps where it will take two 15,000 kilogram bombs to kill a base. If you do this, B-29s are not going to be able to kill the airfield in one run. Lancasters are not going to be able to kill the airfield in one run. It's going to mean a repeat turn. They're going to have to return and have a second attack, which means that your fighters are going to be able to sweep on them and possibly take them out. It means the bombers have a chance to effectively win a game, but they're not instantly going to win it. And as said before, you are letting vehicles, let's go down to France for example, and look at the AD4, which has a repair cost of 6,730. Let's look at the um, Corsair, the F4U7, which has a repair cost of 7,000 lions. These two vehicles can win a game in under 5 minutes and I am not being hyperbolic here, I am not overstating it, I am telling you the exact truth, because it's happened. I have actually got videos of it, I am sure you've experienced it, where these planes, these ground attackers, will go out with their full load. Let's just quickly jump into the game, and let's look at the AD4 for France. Mine is aced, because I've used it. And let's look at the vi the weaponry you get. Oh boy, there's a lot of weapons there. So you could get two 1,000 pound bombs on board. Along with 24 T-10 151 rockets. Do you start seeing the problem here? Do you start seeing the problem here? You can get weapon loadouts, which means you can effectively win a game in less than five minutes if you have a squadron of these. A £2,000 bomb with two £1,000 bombs and 24 rockets on board is enough to even get the tickets down to a point on your own where you can almost win a match single-handedly without seeing another plane and yet these planes are absolutely fine apparently they've not been balanced they've not been nerfed why is that why is that i ask you guys i ask you tech 
because it sure as hell isn't for balancing purposes because if it was these vehicles would have a 20 a 30 a 40,000 line repair cost much like a bomber would have let's look at the Vartairs a very very strong pain 15,000 repair pair cost 20,000 repair cost very strong planes however you can't really win a match with four of these but you can sure as hell win a match with four of these now the thing you were telling players who are bitching and I use air quotes there and it's your term for these players which I think is extremely unprofessional extremely aggressive and undiplomatic you call these players who are crying out about the tar 152s and say well you shit out of luck play another plane okay I'll play the K4 you play that what happens next month the K4 ends up having a 20,000 line repair cost the TARS still have 20,000 line repair costs which means effectively you can't play any top tier German, attack, German fighter plane whatsoever because you can't afford it it doesn't make any sense it does not work now again those players bitching and moaning about the HE-177 well you've just gotta s just toughen up buttercup and just live with it no you don't have to live with it because it is horseshit the Gaijin are making these planes unplayable why do you have them in game if you don't want people to play them it's that simple don't have a plane in game if it's too powerful yet you always do it Gaijin Gaijin always does it However, if we look at the premium one, maximum repair cost of 8,800 lions. I believe that's actually been reduced uh, because I'm pretty sure it used to be 10,000 lions off the top of my head. I'm just going to scroll up and just double check because I was guaranteed that I was damn sure that that used to be uh, 10k. Doopy uh, doopy doopy doop doo ju288 ju288 yes okay the ju288 let's just bring this up on screen shall we so let's just pop this up so everybody can see it the ju288c possibly the most effective vehicle for grinding out silver lions repair cost of 11,000 lions before this update new repair cost of 880 sorry 8,800 lions minus 2,000 lions this plane I remind you is more effective than most other bombers in game this plane carries two 15 sorry 18,000 kilogram bombs which is enough for two tons of TNT damage on an airfield which is enough to give you at least 50,000 lions as a reward Whereas the Graf, the HE-177, can carry two 18,000 kilogram bombs plus six 500 kilogram bombs. It's slower, it's more fragile, and in all honesty, the gunners aren't as good. The, the gunnery on this plane is not nearly as good. But it has a repair cost of 41,000 lines. This does not compute. This does not make sense. Uh, let's look at the TAR-154, which is possibly one of the best attackers. 7,450 lines. Let's look at the non-premium vehicles. So, the DOE-335. 7,000. 5,000. Now we look at the German interceptors that are the only way to keep bombers away generally because they're the best climbers. 28,000. 26,000. 
How in the blue hell do you think this is fair? And how can you honestly sit there and say with a straight face that these people that are complaining about these economy changes are just bitching and moaning? Because they are not. They have more than a valid point. Because these changes are not for balance. It's because these are popular aircraft and Gaijin just wants to screw people over. Sure, they have made some good changes, I agree with you there, and it is good to see that the research points for a lot of these jets have come down, because it was bullshit before, but a lot of other vehicles are still at the same price. If we look at tanks, for example, rank 4 and rank 5 are still problem areas. They still take a lot of grinding to get through. Look at the Conqueror. 1,007. Sorry. 170,000 research points. The Chieftain. 180,000 research points. The fuck. A 7.3 vehicle against an 8.3 vehicle. And only 10,000 research difference. 10,000 Lion. Uh, wait, a little bit more, sorry. Uh, my mass was off there. Uh, 490 compared to 440. Do you see the problem here? Yes, they've helped with rank 6 and 7. But rank 5 was a trap as well. Rank 5 is an area where people get bogged down. We look at Germany. And you look at my grind progress. Now, I've been playing since 2016. Early 2016. And I've ground a lot of my way to things. But I've still not managed to get through the bloody German tech tree. Because getting to this stage is bloody awful. Because you're playing some of the worst tanks in game because of up tiering. Because of the game changing. You've got World War II tanks facing off against Cold War tanks. You've got World War II tanks which were designed to deflect armor-piercing ballistic capped shells, fighting armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding saber or heat FS shells. And that is total wank. Now as you can see, 78,000. 160,000. 170,000. 250,000. 180,000 for the Leopard A1A1. 170,000 for the M48A2. A vehicle that is a whole 1BR lower. 170,000 for the Leopard 1. They fixed things, yes. They've done some good things. They've made a good start, but is not nearly enough. They didn't think about the rank 4 vehicles or 5 vehicles. They didn't balance things out. And I know what you're going to say. I know in advance what people are going to say. Well, Scree, they've actually increased the reward. So it's much easier to get better research points nowadays so you can get there quicker. But no. It, it, it's not right because you don't get there quicker. You still struggle. You've still got a hard time because you're fighting in 7.7 .7 vehicles against 8.7 .7 vehicles constantly. You're fighting helicopters. You're having trouble. And it sure as hell isn't easy. Yes, they've reduced the helicopter price for other nations. But they haven't reduced the BR for some of these. The Alouette SA-31B is still 9.0. Whereas in America... We still got an 8.0 helicopter. There's no parity in that. There's no fairness in that either. The B-29. An iconic plane. A beautiful plane. But a plane that is just going to sit in your hangar. Because you can't afford to fly it out. Or you'll fly it out once a month. And just use up that free repair. Just so you can get some fun in it. But you're only going to get one mission out of it. Because you're going to get shot down. Because you're generally facing jets. And facing jets in a bomber sure as hell ain't fun. 
Um, let's just quickly jump to a kill to death ratio of uh, uh, my British bombers. Oh, no, let, let's go for the American bombers. Let's just go for that quickly. And you'll see I'm a bomber pilot, first of all. Um, you could see that my Douglas Daunt, my, my Dauntless is a, is a favoured plane. Um, but B-29, for example, a plane I've aced. So, win ratio is 50%. Battles, 34 Deaths, 23. Respawns, 34, obviously. Um, and victory is 17. So, 17 victories, 23 deaths, 13 air kills. It's not even a 1 for 1, it's a 0.5 average. And yes, this plane can make some good money. But, it can't anymore. This plane is effectively grounded, because Gaijin are too lazy to introduce better game modes. We are not demanding that they reduce the price of everything more, that they make the game easier. We are just demanding that they make the game playable for all vehicles, because at the moment it sure as hell isn't. There are vehicles out there that you simply cannot play anymore because of the cost ratio. Now, when we talk about overpowered planes, a vehicle that springs to mind is PE-8. And the PE-8 is still a very cheap price for repairs of 5000 The TU-2s are still very cheap prices. Yet, these vehicles are extremely effective because... They're attackers, not true bombers, because they have two Shavak 20mm guns in the front of them. These can hunt down bombers. These go bomber hunting a lot. And I imagine their kill to death ratio is actually pretty good. Yet, they're fine. Still a low, still a low line cost. They're still fine to play. Yet the TU-4, a plane that is now 8.0, that you can really no longer use is 31,000 lions for research, for, sorry, repair cost. A plane that's effectively grounded once more. Let's jump to Britain. The Lincoln, the Lancaster. Planes that effectively you can't play anymore because these planes cannot suffer from an attack because Gaijin has made them so weak to attacks, they fall apart after a couple of hits. And you're telling me that this is fair, because they've reduced the cost of some other vehicles. Well, whoop de fucking do That's great news, but it doesn't help, does it? It doesn't help in the long run. It doesn't help people that want to play these vehicles. The main reason I played War Thunder was to get a Lancaster. I wanted to play the Lancaster because it is one of my favourite planes of all time. Shackleton is kind of up there too, but one day we'll get it. Yet, I can't play this plane because the cost of it is too much. Now, I have 3 million lines in my pocket at the moment, but as you've probably seen, I've got a lot of vehicles that are waiting to be purchased because 3 million lines does not buy you much, I can tell you that, my friends. Playing naval for five battles in a row will cost me 200,000 lions. Five matches, 200,000 lions. Again, where is the parity, where is the fairness? It's not there, is it? Yes, sure, some vehicles have been reduced in cost. That is great. And the research points going down on these higher tier vehicles, that's great. That's good news. But we cannot just sit by and let them keep getting away with bullshit that they pull. Now, I know a lot of people are tired from the event. And I'm sure that Tech himself is tired. 
but his tirade, his rant, his attack on the player base for simply wanting to play a vehicle they enjoy is not on. And it's not something people should stand for. I'm sure he's going to get a lot of flack for it, and I am sure I'm going to catch a lot of flack for it as well. Because attacking somebody that is, you know, better than you, um, one of your peers and things like that, is not a thing to do. But I feel like he needs a bit of a slap in the face and to be told that no, what he was saying was not correct. Yes, Gaijin has done a good thing. However, it has come off an extremely bad thing. It has come off one of the worst events in War Thunder's history. This, uh, this research point cost, this research rate, this reduction in price was strategically placed after the event because Gaijin knew that people would be burnt out and tired. And they knew that people would just go, oh yeah, you're rewarding us. Pavlov springs to mind in this aspect. But if we just lay back and we don't complain, then things don't change. If we actually actively speak as a community, we might get things changed. And those things people want changed are things like bombers being able to be played again. Make new maps, Gaijin. Yes. But make new game modes, because that's what the community is crying out for. Because you are not making those new game modes, you are not improving the game, you're just making it easier to grind a little bit. Great. But you're not helping the game at all. You're not helping the game at all. I hope you understand where I'm coming from with this video, and I hope you do not grasp it as some form of hate speech or as some form of attack or even as a way to leech off another youtuber's fame and subscriber count because i'm not i'm not trying to cause an uproar here but i am definitely talking to the people that are defending these changes so adamantly that they're not listening to the critique that is there are still changes needed the critique that everything is not rosy. The fact that we are not going to just sit in this pot as it starts to warm up and then sit in there until we boil to death. We're not going to let it happen to us. The reason we are so passionate about this is because we're passionate about the game. Because we love the game. We enjoy the game and we want it to be playable. And at the moment, for some vehicles, it's simply not playable that's not fair, it's not on, and people should not stand for it. I'm just going to finish this with a bit of facial time, and a face to face, because you hear our voices a lot, and I do a lot of videos where I've, you can see my face, obviously, but this is a heartfelt message and this is a message to larger YouTubers and to the community as whole, to players everywhere and to contributors, uh, large channels than myself. I am just a footnote in the history of large channels, you know, I'm not even there, you know, I'm tiny, but if I can make an impact, if I can at least make the game better and make it so it lasts and make it so people enjoy it then I will feel like I've done my job because at the end of the day I want Gaijin and War Thunder to be the best game there is I want to enjoy it and what they're doing by making planes unplayable is stripping away that joy stripping away any chance I have of enjoying the game, enjoy the game modes. You're effectively neutering us. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope everyone can have a bit of a rest after the event. And most of all, I hope we can make a change for a positive future in the game. Thank you and good night.